Okay, so this is our last presentation today. Uh, um, it's given by uh, Wojtek Kovács, right? <laughs> and he will teach us how to uh, create a dictionary within a year. Uh, rapid Ukrainian English dictionary creation using post-edited corpus data. The floor is yours, thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed here after the presentation of the Vesum dictionary, so this is not going to be a duplicate of the Vesum dictionary or something, but, uh, but uh, here we are interested uh, more like in the procedure of the development of the dictionary, which is uh, to, to huge extent uh, language independent. And uh, it's uh, much about automating dictionary production or making, is making it as automatic as possible and as straightforward as possible. Uh, because for quite a long time, uh, parts of the dictionary could and were generated automatically, um, such as collocations, examples. You have heard probably about the, the GIDEX algorithm uh, for ages. Uh, Lexicographers first used frequency lists generated from Copra. Uh, there were also talks even at this conference uh, about work sense induction and uh, quite quite a lot of research is going on. And uh, so we are thinking already for, for a few years uh, with this uh, team uh, of, of uh, researchers from Lexical Computing and Masaryk University, how to how to like more automate the uh, more automate the dictionary creation. Uh, so we are thinking like let's generate the entries automatically, and let the native speakers or the lexicographers just just post edit the automatic uh, automatic uh, automatic entries. Uh, maybe some of you uh, have tried. Uh, the one-click dictionary feature available in the sketch engine, which is which is quite experimental, but uh, but and uh, or but and it has it has uh, some uh, problems because mistakes from lower level like uh, lemmatization and tagging propagate to higher levels, and if you have uh, bad annotation on uh, on on the morphological level, you you can you can uh, not end with uh, with a high quality uh, dictionary. Also. The whole dictionary entry, as such, is quite a complex structure, and uh, you need some education, some some like um, thorough education, to be able to edit it in a competent way, and uh, and it, it's it's also hard to uh, hard to uh, say maintain it in your head uh, as a as a whole. So so you need some quiet place to work, and and you need uh, you need to have the notion of the of the dictionary entry as as, as such. Uh, well. So our next idea to address these problems was, uh, let's create the entry part separately. So let's firstly create uh, create the, the, the head word list, then the list of collocations, then examples, then probably some definitions and, and so on. I will explain this more in detail. And uh, ask the editors just simple questions within simple web interfaces uh, so that they uh, could work faster and uh, so they don't need some special uh, special education. Um, we call uh, we now call this uh, this uh, procedure uh, dictionary express. And uh, the difference, uh, also one, uh, one one the other difference that I've I didn't mention before, was that we back propagate the annotations back into the uh, into the corpus so that the next round. Uh, doesn't contain the, the the errors from the previous level. Uh, the workflow can be visualized like this in a in a simpler way. So we start with a corpus, we generate a list of headwords from the corpus. Let the editors edit the list of headwords so they decide this is the this is a proper Ukrainian headword. This is a uh, this is a proper name. This is an English word or Russian word, and uh, uh, we end up with a clean list of headwords that we put back into the corpus and we have a clean corpus now without without all the noise that we don't want in the uh, in the dictionary uh, once we have a clean list of headwords we continue uh, like three ways we can generate for each headword we can generate the list of inflected forms uh, and again have this post edited so uh, so that we can uh, we can obtain uh, obtain um, a list of correct head, uh, correct word forms for for every lemma in the dictionary. We can record audio or or having it synthesized, but but it's uh, it looks like or or uh, uh, we 
uh, tried and found out that that uh, recording the audio is quite uh, quite fast and cheap, so uh, it is better to just record that. Uh, then we can, for each head word, we can generate the list of word senses and again have this corrected. Uh, I will address this uh, all, all these steps in more more uh, detail in the next slides. And again, for each word sense, we generate list of similar words, a list of examples, again, automatically extracted in the corpus. And every every uh, box in this uh, in this graph means that we generate something from the corpus automatically and have it post edited by a native speaker. Well, that was a simplified graph. The realistic graph looks like uh, looks like this, and in reality, it's uh, even uh, quite uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Here you can see that that we um, that there are some intermediate steps. Uh, at this point, I, I would like to mention that there are actually three corpora that we that we work with: the original corpus that is text and and fully fully uh, like text and lemmatize fully automatically. Then there are the annotations. These are the blue parts here. And these are, uh, here, is, here is a revised corpus, so with the correct lemmas, and sense corpus, which, which, contains, uh, uh, which con contains the work senses. And from these corpora, we are generating the, uh, the, the partial dictionaries. These are the, the, the green boxes. And finally, merge all of this into, into, the, uh, into the whole dictionary. And the point is that the, this system is quite modular. You can uh, you can uh, perform each of the tasks quite separately. If you don't want it, you uh, you are not forced to do it. If you want to add something, for example, definition, which is uh, which which I've just uh, heard that the ChatGPT is very good at definitions. So if you want to include ChatGPT with definitions, it's it's quite easy to to incorporate this into uh, into into this process. <coughs> Uh, so the uh, so so the thing is modular and uh, and uh, takes the annotations as as the source data for the uh, for the dictionary. Uh, for this project, we uh, we built a new Ukrainian web corpus, which is half by uh, half uh, 2014 and um, UK10, which which existed before. And uh, half was uh, newly downloaded in in 2020. So this this corpus is, is merged from uh, from these two years, and uh, we tagged it by RF tagger that we trained ourselves using using uh, using data uh, that were kindly uh, kindly uh, uh, given to us, uh, so that so that we could uh, train that. Uh, that RF tagger it was lemmatized using the uh, the CST lemmatizer. Uh, now I will show you the interfaces for the parts of this uh, of, of this of this process. So, firstly, we generate uh, the list of head words, the, the list of uh, lemmas uh, from the corpus, and the task for the editor in this step is to uh, is to label each of the word. OK means this word should belong the, to, the, uh, to the dictionary. Um, uh, wrong part of speech means that, that the part of speech is wrong, that the tagger made a mistake. Not a lemma means, uh, means that the, the uh, word form for the, for the dictionary should be different. Uh, there are a few, uh, few hours, and the task for the, for the editor was to assign a label to each head word. Not the best work uh, in the world, I would say. You, you can you can tell. <laughs> I'm happy to yeah. I'm, I'm happy to to have uh, to have two of our edit editors here. So thank you for coming. Uh, but probably don't, not the not the worst as as, uh, as well. Uh, I didn't mention one additional step uh, here. Just just after the head words, we need to revise some of the head words because some some of the head words have. Uh, have a label like not a lemma, so that the lemma should be different, or uh, that the part of speech is wrong. So we need to revisit these lemmas, uh, the, these these words, and assign assign a correct lemma to them, so that we don't uh, so that we don't miss some frequent words due to errors of in uh, in tagging or in lemmatization. So here 
is the interface where the editors corrected the word. For example, here is the word polyclinic, which is not a lemma, and the annotator says that the correct lemma should be polyclinica. And uh, he's also, or they are also pre provided, provided with the examples of the uh, from the corpus, so that they uh, actually see the occurrences uh, of the of the word. Um, further, uh, this task is um, verification of the list of word forms. So this is quite a straightforward task. We just generate a um, list of word forms from, from the, from the uh, corpus for each head word. And the task for the editors is mark the incorrect ones. So either correct or incorrect. <coughs> Uh, so this is one of, one of, one of the really simple tasks. Uh, on the other hand, the word census task is one of the, one of the most, uh, most complex. Here we employed some, uh, some clever uh, algorithm uh, using, using word, uh, word embeddings and, um, and adapt adaptive skip, skip gram technique to cluster the occurrences of each word and match these clusters to collocations in word sketches. So as a result, we, uh, we show the editors a list of clusters like this, and they need to decide if the cluster is one sense of the word or if, uh, if, it, should, uh, if it should be split. Um, they can also uh, mark individual words from the cluster they, they can assign them into different senses if needed, but uh, the point of the automatic preprocessing is that that it uh, it is not needed much, and it was wasn't uh, needed much according to uh, to uh, the data that we get. And at the same time, this is only the part of uh, only a part of the screen uh, of word sense annotation. At the same time, they sh uh, they should uh, name the senses that they found somehow we told them just to disambiguate the senses so that the native speaker should uh, should be able to, uh, to to recognize so for example in english it could be that that uh, the one one label one sense label for the word bank would be river and the other would be finance or something <coughs> so quite straightforward and uh, also we generated uh, automatically uh, automatic automatically generated the translations uh, of uh, of the of the word using Google Translate and and Bing Translate and DeepL, uh, and they should assign these translations to the senses, or they uh, they uh, they might delete them, or they uh, could also edit them in case uh, they they were incorrect. So this was the the most demanding uh, demanding task uh, for for the editors, <coughs> and led to the to the uh, census annotation. Um, another thing for, uh, another, another step was, was uh, uh, editing thesaurus. So uh, again, we uh, started with the list of similar words from the sketch engine thesaurus. And the task for the editors was to, to um, classify them into synonym, antonym, and similar words. So the synonym is like same meaning, antonym. Well, I, I don't need to explain this, uh, this, uh, this uh, things. So for example, here, more was, was uh, identified as a synonym for ocean. <coughs> notion. Uh, last step, I think, yes, was, uh, was uh, to, uh, to assign examples to the senses. So we generated these from the sense corpus. So we address uh, address or um, directly access the sense and selected the best examples for the particular sense if the word had uh, more than one more than one. And uh, the task for the for the editors was to uh, select the best one, edit it if needed, and correct the automatic translation obtained from from DeepL. So this is the interface for editing examples. <coughs> um, 
I already mentioned that that one of the one of the purposes of this whole thing is to to um, streamline the process of development of the dictionary, and it's it's not like um, traditional lexical uh, lexicographical work. Work. Uh, I can illustrate it. Uh, uh, illustrate this by by a rather extreme example of uh, of editation. This is Natalka sitting here. Great to have you here. Uh, who is uh, doing part of the dictionary uh, during uh, during uh, air alarm alarm in Kiev from from Kiev underground on her on her cell phone? So uh, you can imagine that this is really nothing like uh, like sitting in the in the in the warm office and concentrating fully and and uh, well. <laughs> um, Some statistics uh, of the process and of, of, the, of the dictionary. Uh, we uh, annotated uh, in total uh, something like 110,000 headwords. Of them, uh, uh, 55,000 uh, was included into the, dic the, the dictionary. You may, uh, you may uh, think this is quite a low number. It is. Uh, that's because uh, the tagger uh, made quite a lot of false homonymy. So uh, false, false um, inter part of speech homonymy. So it, it uh, assigned um, many parts of speech to just to just uh, one correct lemma, which is quite uh, quite um, uh, quite unusual in Slavic languages. And uh, we we later corrected that, but but uh, well, uh, anyway, um, we have something like forty. Uh, for 450,000 validated word forms, and we managed uh, to uh, to complete uh, nearly 10,000 uh, 10,000 entries within the year, and uh, uh, they they have something like 18,000 word sentences in total. Uh, uh, this, these are not these are the numbers of the paper. There is a, quite a lot of more statistics. If you are interested, just look at look at them, and uh, uh, also since. Uh, we have done some more work on census. Now there are there are, there is something like 12,000 12, uh, 12, word census. The total annotation time was uh, was uh, about 7,000 hours, which equals like 3.5 person years. So if you had one person, it it would take three three and a half a year. And we also found out uh, how many clicks the editors need to make, and it was about half of a mouse lifetime. It was. An average mouse is is like uh, five million clicks, <laughs> so that's it. Uh, if uh, if we look it into the annotation time uh, breakout, it looks like this. The most uh, most uh, time was spent on headwords, but also compare uh, the the fifty five thousand headwords with the with the ten thousand complete uh, complete entries. So this part this part from here to here. Is for the 55,000 words, and this part here is only for the 10,000. If we normalize, it looks like this. So most most time consuming is the census part and examples part. And uh, oh, that's it. Uh, and the and the rest is quite uh, quite fast. That's also the reason why why we annotated so much uh, so much head words. And we ended up with partial entries because because even the word list or the partial entries, and the list of words are uh, are valuable for us. Uh, the biggest uh, biggest difference from the from the previous work on the dictionary is created this uh, this way uh, is the data management procedure. Previously, we had a database that we that we pulled the data into and uh, and. Uh, Push the data into and pull the data out from, and uh, we changed that from uh, from the very bottom. Uh, now we have the procedure that really goes like this, uh, and we can run it any time. And the procedure collects all of the data and compiles the whole the dictionary. And we are also able to uh, able to to run every time every every part separately. So the system is modular, and we can uh, we can do that separately. And uh, we can we we now have, uh, unlike the previous work, we now have the this this process implemented in the form of uh, in the form of software that can be uh, that can be set up quite easily and uh, and 
can be run. Uh, here is some example, but I'm running out of the time, and there is a demo, so so you can you can uh, you can uh, check yourself. This is the the example entry for Zoop, which has seven senses. And uh, let's come to the conclusions. Um, I have talked about the new Ukrainian dictionary, which has 10,000 full entries and 55 partial entries. There is a public sample. Uh, you can click on this long link uh, in, the, in the presentation. Uh, well, I, I think the presentation will be provided, uh, provided on the conference web, web page, so, so you can click on that. Uh, we also built a new Ukrainian web corpus uh, containing 2.5 billion works. And uh, I also introduced the Dictionary Express work, work, workflow, which is now ready to use software and easily to set up uh, for other languages, which we are looking forward to, if you're interested. And I need to thank uh, the, the Institutes of Ukrainian Language and, and the BRUK team for, for uh, allowing us to use their data for training our Tegra. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wojtek. Uh, it's time for questions. Okay, I have a lot of... Uh, do you mind if I have some questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I wonder if you include the feminine uh, person nouns in the head word, and maybe do you pay attention um, what is uh, the, how big they are, there, there is this part of... Is it always the masculine has a feminine or... Not always in the dictionary. We, we do yeah. include them, and to be honest, I have no idea. But but I think if they are, well, not I think, it is the fact that if, if they are um, similarly fre frequent, both of them will be, the, will be there. And if one of the form is, is much more frequent th than the other, then it, it, may, uh, it may happen that the, the lower frequency word won't be there we take the top uh, top frequency list so we we came we came through these uh, through these uh, 110,000 words and if the if the word was there then we we have it and if it wasn't we don't have it Thank you. Just one specific question about this. Uh, for example, minister uh, and ministerka, female minister. Uh, I know that its frequency in GRA corpus, 15,000 uh, use. Um, is it, is it included in the dictionary? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> we, we may look at it uh, in, uh, later. <laughs> Thank you. I'm interested in the extraction of uh, inflected forms mm -hmm. from the corpus. Uh, so, I, um, for example, if you have a word with lots of inflections, it's likely maybe only some of them will appear in the corpus, perhaps for low frequency or medium frequency uh, words. So is the aim just to have a selection of inflected forms for each lemma, or you would want to expand and show a full inflected No, at the, at the time we have only the list of those that occurred in the corpus. But it could be also the low frequency words. So if we have a corpus of 2.5 billion words, that it's, it's pretty sure that all the common, uh, common inflections are there. So we don't li we don't limit the frequency of the of the inflected words. That's what that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. This was great. Um, within this workflow, um, how big would it, the underlying corpus need to be for another language? The to be bigger, able to the this? better, of obviously. But but uh, uh, previously we were working with um, really like small corpus, like two hundred million. It was, it was... Um, so maybe the question is, how small can it be? How small can it be? Okay. Uh, which language are we, are we talking about? <laughs> One. One? One what? One, One million. It's not so small. Well, we have, <laughs> we have, we have done... It's we have big. we have done this big. with with 200 million corpus, but there were significant drawbacks, uh, 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 namely the examples. Uh, the examples task was uh, was much more much much harder than here in the Ukrainian project because 
uh, there were simply uh, too little, uh, too little uh, good examples in the corpus, too little occurrences. Now, uh, we, when, when, we, when we went through these 110,000 words, it means that the least frequent word had still something like 300 uh, documents that it occurred in. And with the 200,000 words, we need, needed to work with frequency of 10 or something like that, which is really, uh, really little. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. I just have an answer to Olena's question. We have both minister and ministerka. Obviously, the rank <laughs> is like 554,000, but we have it. Thank you, Marek. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> uh, can I have a question? Have you ever tried uh, this rapid method for monolingual dictionaries? Is it, or, or is it suitable only for? Well, I, I would say it's basically monolingual dictionary with translations. So we uh -huh. can we so can just leave out. Okay. We, we <laughs> can simply leave out the translations, and it will be simpler. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> but uh, but any uh, another fact is that the structure of the dictionary is rather shallow. Uh, mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. you have you have seen mm -hmm. this in, uh, in my presentation. Okay, thank you. And uh, I think we have five minutes to go to the roundtable. So thank you again for participation, and thank you. Thank you.